Welcome back everyone, Patrick here. Moving on to the next video, a couple of more factoring questions. And notice that these here, they're dealing with fractions. So I wanted to go over a couple of examples like this in case maybe you run into them on your test or in your homework. Now with fractions, personally, the first thing I do is I take all of the expressions and I express them in terms of the same denominator, the lowest common denominator. And then what I do is I factor out that denominator in order to have an expression remaining that doesn't have any fractions. And then you could just go into factoring that as you would with the previous examples that we did. So let me show you what I mean by this. So we got 6 over 5 x squared plus 19 over 5 x plus two. Now this two over here, I'm just going to put over one. So notice that in this particular case, we have a denominator of five, a five over here, but here we have a denominator of one. So we want to make sure all of these have the same denominator. What's the lowest common denominator between five and one? It would be five. So we're just going to multiply this denominator by five, the one by the five to get a denominator of five. And then we're going to multiply the top by five as well. So we're just going to be working with this expression here, changing it to 10 over 5. We don't have to work with these because they already have that denominator of 5. So the new expression is going to be 6 over 5 x squared plus 19 over 5 x plus 10 over 5. And now because you have that same denominator in all of them, what you could do is you could just bring that denominator out. You could factor it out. And initially what I recommend is just factoring out one over that denominator. And so when we do that, we would just be left with those coefficients in the numerator. So we'd have 6x squared plus 19x plus 10, like that. Right? So that's personally always the first step that I take. So let's take this and let's actually rewrite it over here just to give myself some more room here to work uh, with this remaining bracket. So then what you could do is you could take this remaining bracket and then work with it. Notice that it doesn't have any fractions left. So it's just a nice initial way to get rid of any fractions. Right, so now let's work with this. What's the first thing we always check for when we're factoring a quadratic? Can we take out any greatest common factors? Notice between the 6, the 19, the 10. In this case, we can't. That's not always going to happen. Sometimes you will be able to take out a greatest common factor. I think that's going to happen in B and C. And if that would happen, as you're going to see in the next two examples, you would take that... Um, greatest common factor and put it over the five. So instead of one here, this would be that greatest common factor. But in this case, there's nothing we could take out of this bracket further. So we don't have to worry about it. So basically the fraction in front is just gonna be the one over five, but you're gonna see in B and C, that's gonna be different. So can't take anything out initially. So we just go into seeing whether we can factor with decomposition. So let's see that. Let's do the process. The AC value is 60. So we've got to find two numbers that multiply to 60 and then add up to that B value of 19. And that would be what, 15 and four? Like that. So then we take those two numbers, decompose that B value. like that, and then we factor by grouping. So from these two, we could take out a 3x, so we'd be left with 2x plus 5, Then from these two, we could take out a 2, and we'd be left with 2x plus 5, and then we could take out the 2x plus 5, and we'd be left with 3x plus 2, like that, right? So the final answer here ends up being that fraction in front that we initially took out, which was one over five, times these two brackets of two x plus five times three x plus two. And again, as usual, if you want, you could take this, expand it, right? So you could foil out these two brackets, then distribute that one over five in to see if you get that initial expression, right? So that's basically the process. So not too bad, it's just, 
at the beginning, there's just that preliminary step of working with the fraction. So the next one will have 20 over 3 x squared minus 15. Uh, that's going to just be over 1, right? Because the 15 is by itself. x minus 25 over 6. So first step, change it all to be the same denominator. Notice between 3, 1, and 6, what's the lowest common denominator? Well, it's going to be 6. So we could take this 3 here and multiply it by 2, which means we have to multiply the top by 2. So we'd end up with 40 over 6 x squared minus this here multiplied by 6, meaning the top we multiply by 6, so we'd end up with 90 um, over 6 x minus 25 over 6, like that. So next step, notice now we have the same denominator. Let's just take it out for now. So let's just take out the one over the six and see what we're left with. We're left with 40 X squared minus 90 X minus 25 like that, right? Notice how with this quadratic that's remaining, we can further take out a factor of five. And if you want, you could do that in the same step. But maybe initially, as you're getting comfortable with these types of questions, I recommend just taking out the 1 over 6 first, writing this out like that. And then from there, you can work with it further. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to follow the same steps that I did in part A. So I'm just going to write out the 1 over 6. We got the 40x squared minus 90x minus 25. And then I'll work with that separately. And whatever greatest common factor we're going to take out, of that bracket, which is going to be a 5, we'll just put uh, instead of that 1. But for now, I'm just going to keep this general format. So let's now write out the bracket 40x squared minus 90x minus 25. Uh, so notice greatest common factor between all these is 5. So we could take out a 5 and we'd be left with 8x squared minus uh, 90 divided by 5 would give us, what, um, 18? And then we'd have a minus 5, like that. 8x squared minus 18x minus 5. But we took out this 5 here. So if we took out the 5, the 5 goes instead of the 1. It goes on top of the 6. So let's go back to our main work over here. So we'd end up with 5 over 6 bracket this over here, this 8x squared minus 18x minus 5. Okay, again, it's a bit of a longer process the way I'm doing it. I'm really doing it in steps, breaking down the steps, but hopefully you're understanding what is happening here. Again, if you're comfortable taking out the 5 over 6 initially, you can. Um, but again, I'm just trying to break down the steps so you see clearly what is happening, how we're taking out these fractions. And so from here now, what you can do is you could take this remaining quadratic. Remember, this is still all the main work. So over here, whatever I'm writing here, it's just some side work that we're doing. Okay, and now I'll take that quadratic and see if you could factor with decomposition. So the A value is 8, the B value is negative 18, the C value is negative 5, the AC value is negative 40. And then we find two numbers that multiply to AC of negative 40, add up to that B value of negative 18. And that would be what? Negative 20 and 2, negative 20 and 2. So then we decompose this like that. And then from the 8x squared minus 20x, we could take out a 4x and we'd be left with 2x minus 5, like that. And then from the 2x and then the 5, can't take anything out of that, so we just take out a 1 in that case. And we're left with that same bracket of 2x minus 5 that we could take out. Take out that bracket, and we're left with 4x plus 1, like that. All right, so going back to the main work, remember this was this. So this factored into those two brackets, but we still have that fraction in front, 5 over 6. And then we got those two brackets of 2x minus 5, 4x plus 1. So that there ends up being the final answer for part 
b. Now moving on to part c, we got negative 3 over 4x squared minus 15 um, over 8x plus 9 over 2. So same thing again, between 4, 8, and 2, what's the lowest common denominator? It's going to be 8. So what we would do is we would multiply this by 2, multiply this by 2, so we'd end up with negative 6 over 8x squared minus 15 over 8, right? That's already that lowest common denominator of 8, so we keep it. And we multiply this by 4, multiply this by 4. So we'd end up with plus 36 over 8 like that. Now, what we can do here is we can take out a 1 over 8. That's for sure what we're going to take out. But notice that we have a negative here right? A negative leading coefficient. So you could take out a positive 1 over 8 and then leave that negative leading coefficient. Sorry, I forgot an x here. Minus um, 15x plus 36, right? You could leave that leading coefficient, but you're going to have to take out that leading coefficient, that negative uh, 1 at least anyway. We're actually going to be taking out uh, negative 3, but for now, remember, we're just working with a simple fraction that we're taking out. And because this is negative, what I just recommend doing just to get it over with is to just take out a negative 1 for now. I know we're going to take out a further 3 as well, but we'll deal with that in the next step. But if this is negative, you're taking out the 8, it's not too big of a deal to take out the negative 1 as well. And then what happens then is basically all of these signs are going to change. And so we end up with that right there. Okay, so this initial expression that we had and this, they're the exact same thing. We just took out that lowest common denominator of 8. We also took out a negative 1 because we knew that leading coefficient is negative. So now let's write out this quadratic over here. And let's factor this. Now notice First thing we check, greatest common factor. And as I mentioned, between the 6, 15, and 36, we could take out a 3. So if we take out a 3, what would we be left with? 2x squared plus 5x minus 12, like that. So this 3 here came out of this. So we bring that to the top. So the next step in the main work, right? That's the side work. This is the main work. It ends up being negative 3 over 8. 2x squared plus 5x minus 12, like that. Okay, and now let's work with that quadratic separately. So let's see if this will factor. Another thing I actually want to mention is that once you take out that greatest common factor and put it in the numerator, sometimes this fraction here will simplify. So it doesn't simplify in this case, the 3 and the 8, but let's say this was like a negative 4 over 8. Well, you'd have to write negative 1 over 2 then, and then this bracket would stay the same. So just be on the lookout for those kinds of questions too, where maybe this here, it won't keep that denominator of 8. It will be here initially, but when you take it out and you take out that greatest common factor from the numerator, sometimes this fraction here will simplify further. So just be on the lookout for that in this particular case it doesn't simplify further. So we got an A value of 2, B value of 5, C value of negative 12, and we got an AC value of negative 24. Find two numbers that multiply negative 24 and then add up to that B value of 5. What would that be? Negative 3 and 8. Negative 3 times 8, negative 24, negative 3 plus 8 is positive 5. Decompose uh, like that, minus 12, take out an x, and these two take out a 4, then we could take out that bracket, and we end up with x plus 4, like that, right? So, um, the final answer ends up being, let me write it up here, negative 3 over 8, that fraction that we took out, and then this bracket factored into those two brackets. So we end up with 2x minus 3, x plus 4. All right, so not too bad. So if you get fractions, don't get too intimidated with them. Just change it 
initially to be the lowest common denominator and then just take out that denominator initially. And then you're just working with quadratics like we've worked with before. And then any greatest common factor that you take out of that quadratic, remember that's gonna be the numerator over here in this uh, factor, in this fraction factor that we took out. And sometimes this fraction can also simplify, so be on the lookout for that. And then that remaining bracket, sometimes it'll factor, maybe sometimes not. In all three cases here, it did factor. You just take that quadratic, factor it with decomposition.